elastic collision in two dimensions. Remember from last class we said, when you have elastic collision, we have conservation of what? Of linear momentum. Which means what? The initial linear momentum should equal the final linear momentum. You're also going to have conservation of kinetic energy. <clears throat> so we have kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy should equal final kinetic energy. And that's the example we use Ronaldo playing soccer in the World Cup, kicking the, hitting the ball with his head there. And we did that example. But a lot of times you're dealing with two dimension, like um, bowling, playing pool. One of the things I can't stop watching when I see it on TV, and I think it's the dumbest sport there is, but I'm like, I see it and I gotta watch is curling. That big uh, rock when they roll it down the ice, you know, you see them actually, you have one stone is right there. And those are heavy stones. And you get another stone this way, but this time they're gonna hit it. They don't wanna hit it right in the center. They wanna hit it like right there. They're aiming at that spot. So let's say the speed of this, this is moving in this direction with the velocity equals two meters per second. This one has no velocity. They have the same mass, so they don't even have to give us the mass. So we'll call, uh, should we give them numbers? I don't know. Uh, do they have numbers on the stones, the curling? They don't have numbers on them. We'll number these, one and two, so we know which one's which. Could be pool here, whatever you want it to be. After the impact, this is before the impact, after the impact, what's going to happen, notice this one's hitting this at the end right here. There's a good chance now that number one will go in this direction. We'll call it V1 final. And number two will go in this direction. Now I'm going to try to be nice here because otherwise you have too many unknowns. You'll be like three equations by three unknowns. So I'll give you a few things. Let's say I just don't know what that angle is, but I happen to know what this angle is. This was 66 degrees. And let's assume this stone start to move in this direction with the speed of 0.6 zero meters per second. What's the velocity of that one? So I'm looking for two things. And the reason I gave you more information, this way you're not solving three equations by three unknowns. I could have left this velocity out, or I could have left this angle out, then you have four equations by four unknowns. And that's not fun to solve. So by giving you these two, I gave you two, there's only how many unknowns you have right now. Two, that makes the math two equations by two unknowns. So that's the reason. But the process is not going to change. Now, this is elastic collision, so we have conservation of kinetic energy. Let's begin with that. <coughs> K initial equals K final. <clears throat> now the mass is the same for all of them, we'll just use M. That's why I didn't give you the mass. It's one half, the kinetic energy is one half MV squared. One half times M times the velocity squared. That's for this one. Plus the kinetic energy for this, one half 
times the mass times the velocity squared. <clears throat> what about after? Let's look at that one. One half times the mass times the velocity squared. Plus one half times the mass of the second one times the velocity squared. What do you notice about my equations? What do they have in common? One half and m. So mathematically, you can just cross them out to make your life easy. Because that's dividing each one of them by one half m. What's two squared? Zero squared. Point six squared. Point three six. Plus v two final squared. Bring the point three six to this side becomes a minus. Four minus point three six. That's what three point six four equals v two final squared. V two final equals what? 3.64, take the square root of that number. 1.9? Yep. So we got one of the unknowns. How do we get what theta is? Now, we're going to talk conservation of linear momentum. But now, we got a problem. You move in 2D. You got to break it down, the x component and the y component. We got to look at it in both directions. There's my picture. Let's put it right there. Let's do conservation of linear momentum. I could actually left two things unknown. You know what? I'll make it more fun. What about if I don't know what that angle is? Let's make the math more fun. You might see that on the... Uh, come on. Uh, we'll call it... We're not sure if the angle is the same or not. So I'll call that beta, theta and beta. Otherwise, the problem is too easy because I'm sure on the homework assignment, they're going to give you three unknowns. You will see some three unknowns. They might tell you these angles are the same, theta and theta, and ask you for both of these. But they probably ask you for three things. So might as well practice that. So let's look at linear momentum. We have to break the linear momentum into two components. Remember, it's a vector. We're going to look at it in the y direction. And we're going to look at it in the x direction. So when you look at this one, I'm not calculating linear momentum, but let's look at the, what we have. We have this ball is going in this direction. That's in the x direction, a speed of 2 meters per second, or velocity. We got this one now moving, has a velocity equals to zero. After the impact, let's look at number one here. Number one is going to have a component in this direction. It's going to have a component in that direction of the velocity. What is the component in this direction? What's the velocity in that direction? 
V1 final in the x direction is going to be 0.6 cosine beta. And what about the component in the y direction? It's 0.6 times what? Sine beta. This one here, ball number two, is going to have a component in the x direction, component in the y direction. The component in the x direction we'll call it final velocity for number two in the x direction. That's V2F. We're not sure what that number. Oh, we calculated that. Didn't we calculate that one from this part? So 1.91, so why put it there? Let's put the value there, right? So 1.91, where's my eraser? Cosine what? Theta. Has a value in the y direction. It's 1.91 sine theta. Huh? Well, I already drew it pointing down, so I know it's negative. So that, I know below that the y is negative, but my arrow indicator is down. So but the, the magnitude of that is that number. No, because the angle is with respect to x for both of them. Mm -hmm. See the angle? If they, if they gave you the angle here instead of that one, then this one will be the cosine, that will be the sine. But when the angle with respect to x, the cosine is always the x component. The, I'm the, about the other yep, that's because the angle with respect to y in that one. I knew exactly what you were thinking about. But. So now I've got to do conservation of linear momentum in each direction. So let's do conservation of linear momentum in the y direction and in the x direction and see if we can solve these equations. So in the y direction, I'm going to use this as positive in the x direction. I'm going to use that as positive in the y direction. You want to do y first? Doesn't matter which one you tackle first. What was that? Here we go. The initial momentum in the y direction should equal the final momentum in the y direction. In the y direction, what's the momentum of this ball? This stone here. It's mass, which is m, times the velocity in the y direction. What's the velocity in the y direction? Two. Try again. What was it? Up and down. What was the velocity up and down? Zero. Zero. In the y direction. The mass of this, what was the velocity in this direction, up and down? Zero. Zero. The mass of this times the velocity up. Up is what? 0 0.6 sine beta. beta plus the mass of this one times the velocity in this direction, which is what? Negative 1.91 sine theta. The M's will disappear. They show up in every place. Oh, I crossed the wrong thing. We have zero equals what? 0 0.6 sine beta minus 1.91 sine theta. If I move this to this side,
Can we solve for sine theta? It's what? 0.6 divided by 1.91. What's 0.6 divided by 1.91? It's 0.314 sine beta. And I really can't tell you anything else. You'll see the math is not pretty here. If I made the angles the same, that'll make my math easier. What about the x direction? Again, p initial in the x direction should equal p final in the x direction. Let's look at the x direction. Here's the mass of the first one. What's the velocity? Two. Here's the mass of the second one. What was the velocity in the x direction? Zero. Here's the uh, equals, not plus. The mass of this times the velocity, which is 0.6 cosine beta, plus the mass of the second one, which is m, times the velocity, which is 1.91 cosine theta. m's will cancel again. That's why they give us what theta is, just to make the math easy. Good luck solving that in math. So what our book is going to do, they're going to try to give you something to make the math easy. There's your two equations now. Unless your math is really over the top, how would I solve for that? i got to figure out what theta is. Theta is the inverse sine of this one. Because to cancel the sign, you got to take the inverse sign of both sides. So that's why you have to do these problems. So to make life easy on you, they're going to give you something. You don't have to deal with that. So what they decided to give us, but I wanted to show you what will happen. They decided to give us that angle, beta. What was it? Was it 66 when we started the problem? Now watch what happens to the math once you know that value is 66. It becomes much easier. So if you put 66 there for beta here, you know what that angle theta. Or you can put in either one of these. So if I take the top one, I go sine theta equals 0.314 sine of 66 degrees. Let me get my calculator. Let me make sure I'm in degree mode because I used it last night. And good, I was in radian and I'm in degree. What's 0.314 sine of 66? You have sine theta equals 0.287. What is theta? It's inverse sine of that number, which is 16.7 degrees. So you're going to see our book try to make the math easy on you. They know this math is not easy to solve. How are you going to do it on the exam? Yes, I'm going to do what they give you actually for that, which is they'll give you one thing to make the math much easier. 
I can give you the angles the same, you know. Because if the angles are the same, you can collect like terms and make the math a little bit easier. You know, that's a possibility. Or I'll give you like, I know the velocity of this ball is this, you know. So if the angles are the same, you just set them easier. Yeah, because you have sine theta and sine theta here. It makes the math easier. So if you put sine theta for both them, you know. But I see in our book actually gives you either, to, to make it easy, we give you these numbers. If they're going to ask for both of these, they're probably going to make the math easy by making this angle the same, if they ask you for both of these. Because otherwise, the math is not really a pleasant math to do. Because for anyone who, I can kill the camera with this, solving it, but if you didn't take like good math classes, pre-calc and calculus, how do you get rid of the sign? The only way to get rid of the sign by taking the inverse sign. So what you're gonna have, so I'll kill the camera. <laughs>